the human resource manager for UNISAV education for the last seven years. I receive a lot of applications and I'm sure most of you will be sending applications and looking for employment and all this kind of stuff. And so I'm so glad to talk to you um, about what you need to do. Uh, this is not the first time I'm doing this. I know that I've worked with uh, this university. We've partnered before because I work with UNISAV uh, education and you can see our banners here. Uh, probably just to, before I say what I want to say, I'll invite my colleague to mention briefly about what UNISAV is all about and then I can give my remarks shortly. I'll welcome Dennis. Dennis is our academic coordinator uh, in our office. The chief guest, uh, the government spokesperson, the chancellor, uh, Chuka University, the DBC, Chuka University, students, good morning, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Dennis. I'm the academic coordinator, as my colleague uh, Hesborn mentioned. Particularly, I'm interested um, or I'm in charge of careers in the company which has been in existence for the last 18 years. Some of us have been held by the same company and have come back to the same company to work for it. Simply what UNICEF does is to help you, bless you in different universities globally. So I'm pretty sure some of you have seen us in your high schools, uh, in the last, uh, say, when you're doing your phone call. And here we are again to give you a second time opportunity to go and be able to pursue your careers, your master's programs abroad. Uh, in different destinations from the UK, US, Canada, Australia, and all other regions. But importantly, I would like to emphasize a point that I've told uh, other students. Please do understand that careers are changing. What was relevant in the last five, ten years is no longer relevant, maybe, in the current market. So maybe as you do uh, your Bachelor of Commerce as a student right now, in addition to that, what are you looking for? Or what else can you be able to bring on board? That also answers the question of scholarships. I'm pretty sure most of you would be asking, uh, maybe I have a first class honors. Would I be eligible to apply for a particular scholarship to a different destination? Yes, it's possible to be able to apply for a scholarship. But also notice it's one time opportunity, which is given to you to the same university in the University of Nairobi, to a student in the Nelson Mandela University in South Africa and someone else from India. So the issue at hand is not you having a first class, is not you having a second upper, but there are a number of things that you need to be looking at as a student that would make you relevant. For example, how close are you with your lecturers and how well would they be able to write for your recommendation letter? How or what kind of community service have you been able to do while still in university? Yes, all of us have been given the same platform, but have you been able to volunteer anywhere, even for one month? Have you been able to donate blood, even for one, uh, even a single time? So these are some of the things that you actually think they may not be able to count, but actually when you are making an application to the university, or when you are looking for an opportunity abroad, they would be able to count. Why are we still thinking about petroleum engineering? Why aren't maybe are we thinking about energy systems engineering, which is to deal with solar? Why aren't you maybe thinking about windmill? There are some courses that maybe we are not so in, uh, uh, introduced to that are very, very marketable out there. For example, do you guys know of a course called Professional Morning? Your work is to, uh, to uh, help cry in the burials. A very well-paying job in the U.S. Very well paying job. So simply, simply what I'm trying to encourage you students, or I'm encouraging uh, the youth right now, please don't just be tied to your environmental engineering. Don't just be tied to that medical course. Look into another opportunity, which again, I'm so glad that they, um, oh, they've left. Um, I'm just looking at it from a point of view. Uh, remember when we had COVID last year in 2020, 
And uh, one of the countries that I was really surprised to see him use drones in East Africa, and yet you are the leader in East Africa, was Rwanda. Again, can you look into that opportunity? Are you about to tap that? Again, another tip that you may need to know, not all of us are business people. Some of us are fitting so well in the corporate world, others are fitting so well in the business world. So it's very important for you as a student, before you get to say that I'm going to venture into business, try to figure out what your personality is like. Imagine an introvert going into marketing. Yeah? Imagine an introvert going into journalism. That may not be as successful as an extroverted person who may be able to get into that kind of a career. So it's very important as a student before you get to uh, graduate uh, uh, in December to look into other opportunities that may be available for you that you can be able to uh, venture into. We all have the same opportunity, as I said. How many of us have attended any leadership seminars? How many of us have been able to attend any leadership uh, trainings? Again, if you're looking for that particular scholarship, if one of you has done it and the rest of you have not done it, of course they are going to be considered. So what I'm trying to say is, don't just focus on getting a first class. Don't just focus on getting a second upper. Don't just focus on getting a second lower, but focus at what exactly are you getting and what other things or what other traits do you possess that would make you be of value when you are making an application. Attitude is very important. When you come for that particular interview, what exactly or how do you react or speak when you are asked a question? It would be very important for you to be able to possess the right attitude that would actually make you stand out in a panel when you are, um, um, when you are applying or when you have attended a particular interview. Remember, uh, the current workforce is really turbulent. In that, different days or each and every day, we are getting different kinds of opportunities which require different kinds of skills. Right now, the current employer is not looking for you who just did accounting and finance. They're not just looking at that specific thing. They're looking at how many more things do you have or have you done that would make you stand out. So in as much as you did become, have you been able to do SCCA? You know? In as much as you've done journalism, have you been able to do something else like fashion? If you're so good in music, have you been able to go to class and maybe attain a bachelor's program? That's exactly what the current employer is looking for. As opposed to previously when they were so specific in what they were getting or what they were actually uh, offering uh, different uh, students. Of course, uh, it's very important for you to do the research. One of the things that I may also need to discourage you in a positive manner, don't just apply for scholarships because they are available. You may not be able to qualify for 90% of those scholarships. And you know what happens when you apply and you're not uh, accepted? That I'm worst uh, student. You don't understand why you're not being able to get a particular scholarship. It's very important for you to do your research before you make an application. And that is why UNICEF is there to be able to help you. For example, the UK offers fully funded scholarship. Even pays, uh, gives you money each month for your upkeep. Again, what are the terms and conditions that are required for that? For the ladies in the house, we have so many, so, so many women related kind of scholarships again the other issue could be yes you saw a women uh, kind of scholarship but only asian women have been sourced for so it's very good as uh, it's very important for you as a student before you get to apply or inquire or get to want to do a particular uh, a scholarship application get to find out what kind of skill or what kind of opportunity is out there and if you actually qualify for that kind of uh, opportunity we cannot fail to talk about networking this is your first place to get your potential employers to get your potential employees so make as many friends as you can ensure that those people are people who can be able to help you sometime in life you may not know but the person you're seated next to may be the next ceo in the next five years in a particular company yeah you may not know that that may be the best in it in the world or even in kenya so it's very good you look into uh, networking and network starts from now uh, wherever you are uh, seated um of course if you're looking into uh, getting to the uh, to different countries or looking into different job prospects how well is your cv written 
Are you writing it in the traditional way? Are you writing it the modern 2021 way? Please don't just write a CV. I was so surprised to hear uh, a month ago. So a company, a very prime company in Kenya had advertised uh, a job opportunity. And uh, very many, they were only looking for five people uh, to get into that um, company. And this is what happened. So they received over 10,000 applications for that job. And do you know how they were able to cut that down to 50? The first thing that happened is, you see how you've written your email address. So whenever you send that CV, so for example, um, uh, my, uh, my email reads as, um, um, say, 2021, the best man. That's how the email writes, uh, reads. So when the company receives the, uh, the email, it's automatically spammed. Automatically spam. It does not read your two names. There's no way in my CV I would be the best man in 2021. Or there's no way my name on my ID would be whatever we are calling ourselves on those emails. So from 10,000, believe it or not, that, uh, that system, uh, that software was able to cut down the applications to 1,000. Even without having to call anyone for interview or even without looking at the qualification that the person has. So the world out there has become that specific. You write your CV and then actually the font is not the same. Those are not things that you may think that actually count. But when that uh, human resource person is looking at that CV, may be able to notice that and may see the, uh, uh, the fact that you are not uh, someone who has a platform, uh, has, a, an, has order, for example. So it's good you look into some of these things that we actually ignore, and those would be very, very important uh, when you're looking for jobs. Again, if you see a job that is asking you to apply, uh, you can only apply if you have 15 years of experience, and you've just finished uh, university right now. Apply for it. Apply for that job. Most of the employers write the 15 years experience just to make sure that you don't apply. Waste their time too. Yeah? So if you see something that really fits you and the only thing you have is the experience, apply for it. If they say that you need, uh, uh, you, are, you need a BA in communication and you already have a BA in communication and you've actually been the best in your class, you've been the person who has been making the presentations, you've been the person who has been uh, talking to the lecturers, apply for that job. It's okay, there is no harm in trying that. You'd rather get that opportunity, uh, you'd rather get that opportunity and say that you are not accepted as opposed to someone asking you later on, I thought you saw an, ad uh, uh, an advert and you, uh, did you apply for it and you say you never applied for it. So try to grab as many opportunities as, as you can. And my previous speakers have particularly mentioned uh, of importance is look at what else do you have? What other documents would you be submitting when you're making your application or when you're making a university application? And that is what exactly would be able to, um, to sort you out uh, later on. To conclude, there are two types of students. Would you rather be paid 250000 for 10 years? I guarantee you that. Or do you, would you rather I pay you 500000 per month and I don't give you the time frame? So maybe it could be one month or maybe it could be three months or it could be 10 years. Who are you? I have two options. I'm going to give you 250000 for 10 years. I guarantee you that. Or I'm going to be able to give you 500,000, but I'm not going to tell you how many, uh, how many months I'm going to employ you. Who are you? Who are you? If you are with me saying that I'm going to pay you 500,000 per month for an untold time, then consider venturing into business. You may do very well there. That's a risk you're taking. So even if I pay you for one month, you're okay, you'll have invested that money. Even if I pay you for 10 years, doesn't matter, you still are doing very well and you've already started your own business. But if you're the kind of person who asks for the 250,000, you are a corporate person. So before you try attempting doing any business, first try the corporate world. None of them is right, none of them is wrong. Just depends with your personality, just depends with your interest. Some of us want to work for some companies for say five years and we uh, grow up and maybe go into venture into our own business. 
That's right. Others don't want that. Others want to be employed by the government, for example, and you work there for as little or as long as 20, 30, 50 years. Still okay. Not a problem. So of importance is try to discover what you are or who you are, what your strengths are, and what would actually make sense to you when it comes to job application and when it uh, comes to uh, uh, getting into uh, um, uh, different uh, careers. And lastly, some of us are doing courses that we don't like. Right? Some of us actually were forced by our parents or maybe the government to apply for medicine and because uh, the course was full, you ended up doing teaching. Some of us are doing that. There is no harm with starting afresh. I think you've seen enough memes that have been circulating that doesn't matter where you are. Some people started and five years down the line they failed. For example, COVID happened. Very, stand, uh, very outstanding businesses really went down during COVID. And some of those people are actually trying to piece up their life again. Others like me and you may not have had the opportunity to access education until the age of 25. Five years later. Yeah? Some of us were given the opportunity early but were not able to get a job maybe again after five years. We are all different. If you find that you're doing a course that you don't like doing, fine. Finish the course. But before you start lamenting, try to look for what you wanted. Try to look for people who can be able to support you in what you want. And that way you can be able or you can be sure that after 10 years or in the long run, then you'll be one of the best, uh, maybe uh, doctors or engineers or whatever it is in your life. Thank you so much. We'll be around. Uh, we'll just be here. If you need any material about different universities or if you need our contacts or you need our uh, our numbers or you need our flowers would we'll be definitely here to answer some of your questions about careers and of course we'll ensure that you land you in the best places in the world thank you so much for your time thank you dennis and uh, just to conclude i also came with a colleague she will just wave uh, caroline she's in charge of distance studies at uh, UNICEF Education. So if you want to learn virtually, let's say in Canada, whatever country, but, but here in Kenya, you can talk to her. So to conclude this matter, as I've, as I've mentioned, there are so many jobs in Kenya. The problem we have today is that most of us are unemployable. You will come and say, yes, I want a job in UNICEF, we report to work at 8.30 and we leave at 5. The following day you will tell me, you know, Matatu, Sarara, you come to, to work at 9. And there are so many things. So I just want to say this, that before you apply for that job, do a bit of background check. Check the company. Know the location, know the branches they have, know their goals, their vision. No, before you go for the interview, don't rush for the interview and you have no idea what that company does. Of course, dress code was mentioned. I'll not talk much about that, but dress appropriately for the interview. Align what you've done with that job. So I love to hear something like, you guys, you send students to study abroad and I've done business. I know how to do marketing. I know how to do A, B, C, D. Align what, that, the, what you've done, your past experience, with what you want to do. What about your CV? You must have on that CV your contacts. That is your email address. Dennis has talked about those funny, funny names. You can open another email address just for employment. You know? And I don't write to you what, what, you know, those things are just funny. Uh, they will not even reach some of the destination. Have your academic qualification on that CV. Have your experience. And let the CV has, you know, don't have, don't put a lot of details about the many details that you've done. Now, experience is a very good thing. And most of you have talked about, I've just graduated and you are looking for experience. What do we do? That is what we are saying today to you. Are you a volunteer in this school? What have you been doing for the last four years? You, as you are graduating, some people have volunteered in different clubs in this school. 
And you can talk about that. You can say for the last four years in Chuka, I was involved in ABC. Some of you will say, Hesbon, you are talking to us. It's too late. We are graduating soon. We have not, we've been doing nothing in this school, extracurricular activity, blah, blah, blah. So we don't have experience yet. You can still volunteer after school. You can volunteer in religious institutions, in churches, in community. You can do something before you apply. But if you just graduate and you say, I have done nothing. Let me give you an example. You, you buy a new car, a new brand car, and you put it on this road here. You want somebody to drive it for you to Nairobi. And you get somebody who has a driving license. He's never driven any car in his life. Apart from the one they were doing, uh, you know, the one that, the, the, the one that they did when, when learning driving. But ata hii barabara kuenda mpaka embu, hajawai enda. Will you give that person that brand new can say, hey, anyway, you don't have experience. You just drive. It, that, it can't happen. No one will risk their business to give you something and you've never, and it's not right. And so many employers will shy away from that. Um, volunteer yourself, do internship, uh, even if it's for free. It may sound like free, but you are getting experience. So as I finish, I will say this. As I leave this chuka today, when I go back to the office tomorrow on Saturday, I'll find like um, 20 applications in my inbox. And I'll have some people in the office looking for jobs. The question is, what makes one to stand out in those applications? When you are sending an application, your headline and the cover letter and the attachment of the, uh, the CV is very important. And by the way, just uh, the documentation when you are looking for a job, some, some people send their transcripts. You, you attach your, you, you, you send your transcripts and you got second class lower division. I want to advise you, if you know that your grades are low, don't send your transcript. Just keep them. In case the employer wants them, you can provide. Because <laughs> I look at some of those transcripts and somebody will tell you I've done entrepreneurship. I have a bachelor's degree in entrepreneurship. I say, okay, give me your transcripts. Any course that is related to entrepreneurship, they got a D. Some courses like psychology or some, some additional uh, uh, you know, courses, they scored well, some of them, uh, but the real cause, they always score low. Very few people score the right grades in their, uh, the course of, of choice. And so don't be quick to send those transcripts when you're looking for a job. Keep them for yourself. If you are asked, provide them. I, I was going to forget that. So apart from uh, you need to stand out, do something in addition, something extra. Um, then humble yourself when you're going for an interview. Like uh, I think the gov our g chief guest talked about, you're going, or somebody else talked about, some of the people you are, going, you are writing this CV to, they don't have bachelor's degree. Some of them are diploma holder. Some of them are relative of the owner of the company. So when you go, nyenyakea kidogo, okay? Um, some of you, like some of the CVs I see, Somebody has not even stepped into a master's class. They say, oh, I have a bachelor's this and master's degree ongoing. So you ask them, so how many semesters have you done uh, in this master's program? Um, I haven't started yet. I'm planning to. Um, then, like it has been said, there are so many jobs available. There are some companies, like our company, we were 62 before COVID. When COVID came, we went down to about 32. Now we are recruiting again to go back to 62. If you walked in today with your CV and you come to see me and you've done your thorough research and you qualify for the job, I will take you right away. I've done that before. I do it always. If you talk to so-and-so who knows so-and-so and so-and-so and, -so and you send them and so-and-so calls me and then you come and you come entitled, you know, have you talked to so-and-so? Yeah, I've been sent by so-and-so. And 
you don't qualify. Even if you came that way, still you will not be taken. So I want to request that there are many jobs. You need to align yourself to those jobs. What we look for in most cases is character. We look for your character. We look for somebody who is disciplined. We look for somebody who is honest. Honest. How would you risk to employ somebody to take care of your things and that person is a lie? And the lies begin in the interview. The lies begin in that CV you are writing. Just last week I was interviewing somebody who had a bachelor's degree um, in hospitality. And I said, okay, when did you, how long did you do your diploma? Four months. How many, did, did, how many years did you do your de bachelor's degree? Uh, six months. And we started doing, okay, what, what, how many units? How many? Everything, was, nothing was adding up. Zero. And that's why it's good for some of you. When you go, I mean, you, you guys have gone through the same. And there are many fake things. Somebody come with a diploma. And please, if you've done some diplomas before you came to Chuka, you can remove them from your CV sometimes. They don't help. Because you do your diploma and you write the name of the diploma. And it was in town or it was somewhere here. If you go to where you did that diploma, now it is a bar. If you, if you check the email address, it's not it's non-existing. The telephone number is not working. Why do you put it on your CV? Because it will just land you into being dishonest. It, some of those fake things, remove them from your CV. They won't add anything there. So, honesty is very important. So, I want to request you finally to say this. Begin your job on the right foot. Do not bribe. Do not bribe to get a job. You are a young person. You've done your studies. You qualify. You are okay. Do not bribe. I can tell you this, and I can say even through the camera. I have worked as a HR for the last four, uh, seven years in UNICEF. I have never taken a bribe to employ anybody. And I'm not going to take any. I have never. And if you bribe me, I won't take it. You know what bribes do? When, somebody, when you bribe somebody to take a job, you are like putting that person in their pocket. So they can't suck you. If, you. if I take you a bribe, how will I suck you? If I'm to suck you. And then how will this whole situation end? You are, you're going to say, hey, you know, I gave you money. Now you are chasing me away. Uh -uh. I have. Please do not bribe. Do your diligence and do the right thing. I wish you all the best. And thank you for the opportunity uh, to talk to you guys. Thank you very much.